Game starts in New York City. We see a man running away from police. He jumps on a train that enters the tunnel. As he jumps through the window, it turns out the train is filled with terrorists and we can see that he is wearing handcuffs. He goes through the train, eliminating terrorists until he spots the one, placing C4 on the door. He tries to get to him through the window, but he gets shot and almost falls down. When he gets back on the train roof, another explosion takes place and that opens a hole back into the train. Soon, the man gets ambushed by the same guy. Next thing we see Sergeant Blackburn being interrogated about the terrorist attack planned in New York for today. Blackburn recognizes a guy named Solomon in the picture and says he is the one who is planning the attack. But actually, it turns out that the agents suspect him of somehow being involved in the hostile terrorist operation planned by Solomon. Blackburn confesses he met Solomon nine months ago during the Operation Soulbreaker in Kurdanistan. His mission was to search for the missing Viper squad investigating an improvised explosive device in Iraqi Kurdistan. Viper's last known position was in territory controlled by the People's Liberation and Resistance, an Iranian paramilitary group. And soon they get ambushed by PLR. They push back the enemy and while looking for the Viper squad, Blackburn is sent to secure an IED site, but he gets sneaked from behind by one of the terrorists and struggles to push him off. He manages to beat him and cuts the wire right before the explosive set by terrorists exploded. Back on the streets, Blackburn squad fights to clear the landing zone for extraction, but during the battle there is an earthquake and one of the buildings collapses, falling down on the chopper, knocking down Blackburn for a few hours. When he wakes up, he is injured and he sees Solomon taking the another injured Marine and then ordering one of his men to take him away. A few hours later, Blackburn manages to get out of the ruins. He sneaks through the streets as PLR patrols are searching for American soldiers everywhere. On the way to the extraction point he meets Montes and together they get on a plane and leave the place. Turns out PLR used the chaos caused by an earthquake to overthrow the Iraqi government. In reaction, the US sent 50,000 soldiers to Kurdistan and that triggered a war in the whole region. Then Blackburn is asked about al-Bashir and Lieutenant Colby Hawkins. He says he doesn't know her. Then we see Jennifer Colby Hawkins being informed about change of plans and receiving an immediate launch orders. She learns that it's going to be a strike mission over Tehran to take down al-Bashir. Jennifer gets on her F-18. Very soon her squadron is attacked by enemy fighters and the other plane got shut down. But Jennifer manages to shoot down enemy fighters and helps in taking over the base. But turns out, Al-Bashir wasn't there. Agents are very suspicious and Blackburn is asked about his knowledge of Al-Bashir connection with Solomon. And things get a little bit tense when one of the agents starts pushing Blackburn and blaming him for the death of his commanding officer. Then they ask him about the nuke he found in Tehran. Well, his team was sent to capture enemy structures strategic for the intelligence. They stormed the apartment complex, then they used the Humvee to move to the financial district. They get ambushed by an enemy on the highway, but they received a warning earlier, so they are prepared to push them back. Then Blackburn proceeds to the bank building and while the rest is fighting to take over the place, Blackburn sneaks through the fire stairs and enters through the window, surprising terrorists inside. When the building is secured, officers are ordered to look for al-Bashir. They go for the underground vault and it turns out it's very well protected. They manage to get inside and it's filled with money and documents about current PLR operations. Soldiers also find a Russian portable nuke, but the bad news is the case used to contain three of those and there's only one inside. Suddenly Al-Bashir pops up on the monitor. Turns out he and his men are heading into the vault, so soldiers decide to secure the nuke and escape as soon as possible and the building looks like it's gonna collapse very soon. Back in the interrogation, agent asks about the other nukes and Blackburn says one is already here in New York. Agents ask about Paris and Blackburn gets stressed. They show him pictures of Dmitry Mayakovsky aka Dima, assuming Blackburn knows him and he knows why he was in Paris. Blackburn wants to know what happened in Paris but agents tell him only Mayakovsky knows what really happened there. 
Then we see Dima in car with two other Russians, and one of them says he hopes the American will do what he has to do in New York. Looks like their objective is to capture the nuke before it detonates, even if that means killing police officers. Soon they activate a jammer to prevent Solomon from detonating the nuke from the distance. Then they storm the building filled with terrorists and through the parking lot they progress upstairs to the offices and enter a main room getting close to their target. But terrorists start to escape with the nuke. They run outside and escape through the streets where they have to fight the French police who don't differentiate them from the terrorists and just shoots everybody. And the chase turns into a regular bottle in the middle of the city. A helicopter gets shut down, crashing on the building, and one of the terrorists uses an RPG. And that actually kills one of Dima's friends. The guy with the nuke escapes to the train station, and there he jumps on Dima at the entrance to the platform. Dima manages to handle him and throws his ass under the train, but turns out the bag he left contains a dummy, not a real nuke. And a few seconds later, we hear an explosion and a blinding lightning comes after very soon. The nuke was detonated in the other part of the city. Agents show Blackburn what happened in Paris, informing him there were 80,000 casualties. Blackburn explains he tries to stop Solomon from doing the same in New York. Agent points out that a Russian ex Spekna's being in Paris at the same time that the nuke was blasted makes it kind of look like Russians did it and Dima was sent by them to detonate the nuke. Blackburn tries to explain that Dima was there to stop it. Then agents mention Miller and Blackburn says that back in the Kurdistan they sent a distress code and Miller came to get them. We see Sergeant Miller on a tank advancing through the highway fighting enemy forces on the way to Tehran. They push forward through the streets to get to Blackburn, who is waiting for backup in the bank building. Unfortunately, Miller unit gets hit by a missile and gets stuck. While they try to hold on waiting for air support, they got caught from behind by PLR. Miller gets captured and he wakes up in a room with Solomon and al-Bashir, and they record a video with Miller's execution. Agents show the video to Blackburn saying it doesn't connect Solomon with nukes. And again he tries to explain, no, that's exactly what it does. But since the bank building was destroyed and Miller got killed, there's no real evidence or anyone who could confirm his version. At the same time they receive a call confirming that one of Solomon's known fake ID aliases was registered arriving in New York. And all of a sudden Blackburn's version is starting to make more sense. Then he tells a story when he was sent to take down al-Bashir. He was a part of an assault team on a stealth mission during the night. They sneak through the buildings and found a room where Miller was executed. Then they went to the location where they believed al-Bashir is right now. And when they got close they saw al-Bashir trying to escape with a car, but they shoot the car and make him crash the vehicle. So they grab him and take him out of the street, calling for backup and waiting for evacuation. And turns out Bashir got badly injured due to the accident. Blackburn manages to take him to a safe location at the mall and takes a defensive position until they got evacuated. Al-Bashir's condition is getting worse and he gets delusional, saying different things in agony. He speaks how Solomon must have betrayed him and and betrayed his location and that he also was the one who stole the bombs and he reveals and warns Blackburn that on the fourth day of this month he plans to strike and then he passes away. Agents show Blackburn's Bashir's phone containing information about a Russian armed dealer Kafarov connected to al-Bashir. After al-Bashir's death he was believed to be the one who had stolen the nukes. Blackburn tells how they tried to capture Kafarov in his villa on the Caspian Sea coast near the Azerbaijani border. However, they ran into a Russian paratrooper battalion also after Kafarov and they were forced to fight them. In the chaos of the battle, Blackburn's squadmates Kampo and Matkovich are killed by Russian air attack. And actually one of the agents showed compassion for Blackburn's loss but soon he turns it over into anger again, accusing him of turning on his bodies for the enemy. 
Blackburn tries to explain the Russians were not the enemies in this one, and the other engine points out to Blackburn that Dima was also in Iran with a similar mission, targeting Kafarov's villa. Actually, they succeeded in riding Kafarov's place. They take down Kafarov's security and chase him while he tries to fly away with a chopper. Dima jumps on it on the last second and he starts to fight with Kafarov. During that fight they both fall down, but luckily for them they land in a pool. Kafarov tries to bribe the team, but he gets bitten by Dima. Dealer swears that he doesn't have the nukes and he will reveal everything if they let him go. When Blackburn arrives at the villa with his team, they split up to search the place. Soon he finds Dima with a deceased Kafarov. Dima takes him at the gunpoint, saying that Kafarov stole the nukes from Russians and sold them to Solomon. He used PLR to get them and plans to attack in Paris and New York. Dima explains that the two of them can prevail the war between their nations. Then he hears an American commanding officer is coming and he gives up and asks Blackburn to kill him to prevent the war that would cause millions of people death. And Blackburn decides to shoot his CEO down. And by confessing that, Blackburn actually admitted he shot an American soldier under the influence of a Russian special agent. That doesn't sound good. He is told he was played by Dima and Russians, who were secretly behind the whole operation just using him as a puppet. But Blackburn still insists on his version of the story though. But since there is no real evidence of the third nuke's existence and anyone who could buck up his version is dead, they still consider him as a traitor. Well, there's Montes, who also was there, but he only saw Blackburn killing the CEO and he has to confirm that, because that's what he saw. And this confession actually proves a version where Dima fooled Blackburn and escaped to Paris to blast the nuke there. One of the agents tells him that Solomon actually works for the US government and for years he has been cooperating and was put close to al-Bashir on purpose. So that's why no one believes Blackburn. As the interrogators leave the room, they receive a call about a hijacked train in New York. Blackburn realizes he must act. Looking at the train map, he also spots that the train Solomon will use for attack will pass a nearby bridge very soon. He convinces Montes to help him. When agents get back to the room, they attack them and manage to cut loose. They jump out of the building and run on a bridge, jumping on the train roof. And that gets us back to the scene from the beginning of the story. So, fast forward to the moment he got knocked by Solomon. Well, he actually manages to strike back and grabs the other terrorist with the detonator and causes the explosion that crushes the train. Blackburn chases Solomon through the sewers and back on the street. Meanwhile, Montes picks him up with a car and they pursue Solomon until both their cars crush each other. Well, everyone is a little injured, but Solomon stands up and kills Montes. He also tries to shoot Blackburn, but he has no bullets left. Blackburn uses the moment of destruction to hit him and handcuff her hands together. They struggle until Blackburn spots a brick and uses it to knock down Solomon. Then he secures the nuke. After that we see Dima drinking alone. He is affected with the radiation and writes down his version of the story. That actually backups what Blackburn was saying and clears his name. He also justifies their actions in the name of a greater cause. But when he finishes, he takes a gun and at the same time he hears knocking on the door. Fade out and we don't really know what happened. That's how the game ends.